Mr. Massey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Ray, as you know, the uh, world's largest social media companies took the unprecedented step of canceling, blocking, or otherwise banning the president's social media accounts after January 6th. To the best of your knowledge, did anybody at the FBI or anybody representing the FBI or any other branch of the U.S. government consult with these social media companies before they took these actions? I'm not aware of any such consultations, no. And to the best of your knowledge, did the FBI or representatives of the FBI or any other branch of the government consult with the social media companies before they took the actions of canceling tens of thousands of accounts in that following week? Well, again, I can't, I'm not aware of any conversations that are the way you've just described them. Certainly, we do engage with social media companies where we pass them information uh, just like they pass us information, and sometimes information that we pass to social media companies prompts them to then, under their terms of service, take certain action. But whether that happened in this, whether that happened in this particular instance, I can't, I can't say, because I don't so know. So you're not aware of any. I'm not aware of any action of the sort you've described. From at least 2007 through 2016, the FBI conducted an investigation into evidence that the Saudi government. Agents provided essential assistance to the first arriving 9-11 hijackers, and the FBI and DOJ have publicly acknowledged that three Saudi government agents are primary subjects of that investigation, which is named Operation Encore. We passed a law in Congress, JASTA, to ensure that the 9-11's family's case against Saudi Arabia could proceed. The 9-11 families issued a subpoena in 2018 for records from the FBI's 9-11 investigative files that are critical to that lawsuit. According to lawyers for those families of the victims, the FBI has refused to search its complete files for responsive documents, claiming it would be too burdensome to do so, and the FBI has withheld certain key documents and significantly redacted others, despite the fact that the records concern events that occurred 20 years ago. Will you commit today that the FBI will conduct a review of all its relevant 9-11 files on an expedited basis to identify documents relevant to the family's lawsuit and to produce them to the fullest extent possible without sacrificing justice for the victims in the name of diplomacy? Well, I, I will make sure that our folks are doing everything they possibly can consistent with our responsibilities. Uh, obviously, there are matters that are involve classified information. There are matters that involve grand jury information. I do know that the Justice Department has asserted the state secrets privilege and that I understand that that's been upheld by both the magistrate judge and the district judge about some information. I also know, though, and I think this is important for me to add, uh, that we have produced and worked diligently to produce thousands of documents, including right. ones that have rarely been released. And I would not uh, want to leave this exchange without telling you how much I care about this issue. Uh, the families you, of the 9-11 victims matter deeply to me, and I, I know they're Will frustrated. You, let, me, let me ask you then, would you commit to formally request that the DNI review documents the FBI has withheld from the families to determine if they can be released in the public interest, as she is authorized to do pursuant to Executive Order 13256? I'm happy to take a look with the DNI and others to see if there's more information that can be declassified. Okay, uh, real quickly, the NICS background check with the F which the FBI runs, according to the GAO, in 2017, there were 112,000 denials and only 12 U U.S. attorney offices prosecutions. Now, I don't want you to impugn the, uh, the DOJ or the ATF for only prosecuting 12 out of 112,000 of these denials. What's obvious here is that there are some false denials. In fact, Probably a large majority of these denials are false denials. According to John Lott, who worked at the DOJ, because of similarities in surnames and first names among racial and ethnic groups, black Americans are three times more likely to get a false denial, and Hispanics are two times more likely to get a false denial than Caucasians. Does this, are you aware of this? I'm not aware of Mr. Lott's uh, findings. Would it concern you if there was racial disparity and that uh, law-abiding black Americans and Hispanic Americans were being deprived of their right to self-defense? 
Well, I would be concerned about false denials, and certainly I would be concerned about racial disparity. I, I, you, you mentioned the. Will you, will you commit to uh, <laughs> to investigating whether is whether there is racial disparity in the Nick's background check the, results? The gentleman's time has expired. The uh, witness may answer the question. I'm happy to look further into the issue. I might have my staff follow up with yours to see that, make sure that we have the same information that you're referring to. Uh, but certainly, you've raised issues that would that I'd want to look into further. Thank you, Director Ray. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Christopher Ray was flat out lying right there, and the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think, I'm you know a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there, and uh, I think he showed it, especially in this his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is, because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, and I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues, and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases. And this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C., there is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, 
that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other capital she's ever been in is a state capital that's open 24 seven. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they wanted to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message, and that's what this is. It's message prosecuting, and, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.